morning. Um, I'm going to challenge you today with a, 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 it's a religious word, but it's a very important word and it's something we don't use very often, but in order to enter heaven we need it. And it's called sanctification. So in the long short of it, the simple meaning of sanctification is uh, to be set apart, um, to be freed from sin. And to sanctify something is to set it apart for God's special use and purpose. Amen. I think that's a key. Okay? So that's what my message is about. And I thought, how am I going to deliver a message on sanctification that uh, might make a bit of sense? In, uh, and I thought, I'm going to read a story about um, from it's from Luke 7, 36 to 50. But instead of reading it out of the Bible, I'm going to read it um, in a different form, in poetry. And it's actually a song. And so I'm not going to say who it's from, but for those that know this guy will know exactly who it is from. And uh, basically the scene is set in this um, poem, this song, is uh, a guy by the name of Simon. He's a Pharisee. He just heard Jesus preach at the temple and uh, it was pretty impressive, no doubt. So he brought him home and they're having a, having a feed. So this is it. The crowds were in the streets that day when Jesus came to town and all the synagogue was there for more from miles around. So I asked him home for dinner just to see what I could see of this famous local prophet from here in Galilee. I don't just know how this woman got into the room, but you couldn't miss her gaudy clothes and her strong perfume, sweet perfume. She went straight to Jesus' feet and stopped there and stood right there. Then cried and wet his feet with tears, then dried them with her hair. Now of all, this, uh, all the women in this town, none was well, more well known. For a fragrant sin she lived in, in the wickedness she sown. But he didn't move to stop her, seemed this prophet couldn't tell. The woman that was touching him was the kind they buy and sell. And I had no idea just what this Jesus planned to do when he said, Simon, there's something I need to ask of you. So I said, teacher, if it's on your mind, then tell me what you will. But as he began to speak to me, the room quickly stood still. He said, take a good look at this woman now. In spite of all her fears, she's kissed me and anointed me and washed me with my tears. She's honoured me and you're only being too rude to me instead. You gave me no kiss of greeting, no anointing for my head. You see, her sins were red as scarlet, and now they're washed away. The love and faith she's shown is all the price you have to pay. You see, the depth of God's forgiveness is more than you can see. And despite of what you think of her, Simon, she's beautiful to me. Now my anger turned to hatred. I wanted nothing more to take this prophet by the throat and throw him out the door to act like God forgiving sins and speak so to me. This itinerant from Nazareth and back with Galilee. But instead, I sat and trembled, shaken to the core. The woman still was weeping as she knelt there on the floor. Jesus turned to her and said, your chains have been released. Wow. Your faith has saved you from your sins. Rise, walk in peace. You see, your sins were red as scarlet, but now they're washed away. The love and faith you show is all the price you have to pay. For the depth of God's forgiveness is deeper than the sea. And no matter what the world may think, you're beautiful to me. Amen. Wow. The, uh, the great man John the Baptist said, when Jesus came on the sea, worthy is the lamb. 
Um, he knew that Jesus was the Lamb of God coming to save. Yet he said he couldn't even unstrap Jesus' sandals. Yet Jesus chose Simon, um, John the Baptist to baptise him. Had a purpose. The sanctification, you see. Used for God's holy purpose. Mm. When uh, Peter was out fishing on the lake, caught no fish, and Jesus told him, throw your nets on the other side, and they caught all these fish. What did Simon do? He came to Jesus, fell at his knees, and said, I'm a sinful man. Sanctification. Jesus had a plan for Simon's life, you see. Had a purpose. You see, those feet that Simon fell at, that John the Baptist couldn't untie his sandals, those feet that the woman wept and wiped her, his, uh, her, her hair with her, with her tears, from her tears, those feet would tread the streets of Jerusalem with a cross of timber. And uh, this cross of timber would walk to a place called Gogatha. And these feet would even fail him. There he could no longer carry that, that bit of hunk of timber on his shoulders anymore. And he had another bloke has to carry it for him. Yet those feet did not fail him to reach in Calvary. And then those feet that that woman wiped her hair with it her, with her from her tears would then be to cruel nails surrendered. Friends, sanctification comes with a heavy cost, yeah. with a heavy price. Yeah. But God, Jesus, our Saviour, would like us to come to the cross and look up. Mm -hmm. Because when we look up, we will see those feet bearing our scars and we will realise that's how much it cost for me to enter heaven. Mm -hmm. But those feet did not remain on the cross. They entered a grave and they did not remain idle. Those feet would exit that tomb still with its nail scars in as a reminder for his men and he would reveal himself to a chosen who would then understand that they were sanctified and God had a purpose for their life. But the man that Jesus, uh, that Simon Peter fell at, at his feet, he would one day walk the same, in the same footprints as Jesus. It would cost him his life because he loved the Lord. Mm. That is sanctification. Yeah, so do not take this meal lightly today. It's a simple little biscuit and a little bit of juice. But it, who it represents is great. Yeah. Let's do this together. Mm. Take and eat.